In this tutorial, we'll take a look at customizing Storyline's Course Player. Now, by Course Player, we mean the frame that holds everything together. Let me just uh, pull a preview up of this, of this project. So here's the player, and by the player, we mean the frame that goes around all of your content. You can see right here that we have a, a menu. We've got a glossary right here with some basic terms in it, a notes section. A lot of times people use the notes section as the transcript section. So it just keeps a uh, transcript of whatever the narration on the slide is saying. You also notice that we have a search down here, volume, and then basic player controls. Well, Storyline gives you a lot of flexibility for customizing how all this looks. And maybe you, you, know, you don't want to show the menu. You want to just remove everything except for the actual slide area. That's really easy to do in Storyline. And in this tutorial, you'll see just how easy it is to customize the course player. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to close the preview. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and download the practice files. There's a few resources in there that we're going to use to add to the menu. So the first thing we want to do is just come in here and look at what we have here in Story View, right? We've got this main scene called Course, and then all the slides in underneath that, and then we also have another scene called Player Resources. So what we want to do is just customize the way all this is presented in the player. And we do that by coming up to Player, and here's where you can begin customizing the way everything looks. Now one of the things that's really popular with Storyline is getting rid of this menu, not showing the menu all the time off the left. And that's really easy to do in Storyline. So if you just see right here under Player Tabs, if I just come down here a little bit, you'll see a sidebar for Menu. And the menu is selected. So let's say if I just, just didn't even want to include the menu, I could turn that off. But because I already have a couple other tabs, Glossary and then Notes, those are all showing. And of course, with the logo, that's also going to keep it up there. And that's one way to turn it off, right? If I turn off all those the three tabs, now I can start to get that chromeless player look. I'm going to keep everything on here for just a moment as I go back through this. Now for the menu, maybe we want to move the menu up here to the top left. It's a really great way to consolidate the, the space that you're using in your slide. It also gives you some more room maybe to make the slide even larger. So to move these positions, these tabs around, we can just select one, and then you have these two arrows right here to move it up and down. If I move it down, it's going to move it in between the glossary. If I move it one more time, it puts it at the end. And then if I come back up, you can see it starts to move. And let's go ahead and move it up one more. And now the menu's all the way over here on the far right. And I can just keep nudging this up. Now it's in the middle. And there we go. So now that it's in the top bar, the top bar left, there's my menu slide, right? So I got the menu out of there. If I wanted to show the notes as the primary transcript, I could just move this one up. If I wanted to show the notes as the primary transcript and keep that always visible, at least visible by default, I can select that and move this up. And that's going to be what you see when you first preview the course. Now the glossary by default is right here in the, um, the main menu, the main side menu area. If I want to move that up here to the top right, I can just select that. There it is in the sidebar. And we just nudge it up, and now it's over here in the top right. Now the glossary is a nice little feature for adding terms or common terms that are used throughout your course. If you want to modify the glossary, just come up here under Properties, and you see the glossary option. And I have two terms right in here. Just click this first button to add a new term, and you just type in your title and then your definition, right? Click Save, and that just adds another uh, entry into your glossary. And you can, of course, select any of these and then edit them and make changes that way. And you also notice that by default, they're going to be alphabetically organized. So I, even if I delete one, it's still going to keep that alphabetical order for the glossary. Come back over here to Features now again. And here's where we have some other common features that you'll see on courses. So this, this title right here, Comstar Wellness, Comstar Employee Wellness, that's coming from the title. If I wanted to change the title, I can just update that. And that'll update the title over here. So I can override whatever default title has been set. Now, this course doesn't have any audio. There's no narration recorded for it. So maybe I don't need this, this uh, audio button here, right? Because if it kind of indicates or signals to the learners that there's some audio. So I can turn off the volume, right? So now that you see how the seek bar just takes up more space right there. So turn that off. 
and by def default the seek bar is present on this slide maybe I don't want it I could just remove it and I have a cleaner interface if there isn't really any inter uh, animation or interaction it's just uh, static slides maybe I don't need that seek bar I'm going to keep the seek bar and let's take a look at the resource tab if I come on over here you see the resources and I've got a, uh, a PowerPoint file and I've got a couple PDFs in here resources is a really great way to share additional handouts with your learners and you do that I've got a resource tab right here if you click the paper clip icon right here and here's where you have your resources that you can manage you can select what's already in there and you can move them up or down you can see how a storyline reflects that over here you can see the updates now to add a resource just click the add resource button and you can add a URL so let's just say eLearning Heroes and I'll type in a URL and if I needed to test it, I could do that, but I know it's going to work. So I click save and there's the URL and then here's the name. So the name displays however I entered it, right? So if I wanted to edit that name, there we go. E-Learning Heroes, maybe community. And I click save and you'll see that title gets updated right there. And the same thing for the files. Just click add resource. This kind of time I want to add a file and I'm going to browse to it. And this is where you can use those resource handouts in the assets folder. So in this case, I'll add the wellness PowerPoint, click OK or open. And if I wanted to give it a custom name, you see how it has a name there. Let's just say uh, good stuff to know just because I already added the, uh, the, the file over there. So click save and then here's the new title for it. So it's the same document, right? But I just gave this one a custom name and that's it, right? So you just have some resources that can be uh, persistently available throughout the course. And then another really common change that we see is to customize what these default labels say. So for example, notes, right? Notes could be a lot of different things. It could just be a couple uh, shorthand summaries of what the slide has, or maybe it's the real transcript of what the narration is, 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 is saying throughout the course. Well, if you want to change these, you can do that as well. So you see this label, this uh, button right here, text labels. If we click this, you get access to every <laughs> label that's used in Storyline. So what I could do is come down here and let's say I want to change notes. And I just need to find it right here, right? So there's the notes tab 51. I could come in here and just call this transcript. And if I update the preview, Storyline has now updated that to transcript. So just a way that you can customize the labels that you see in your project. Now it's probably a good idea to save this, right? Because I've already made a custom version. So I'm just going to click save and Storyline's going to save this in your text labels folder. And I'll just call this one David labels just to save a separate file, right? So I can always go back. And this is a really good idea for if you're working with different customers or different organizations who you have, you know, just differences in how they say next and previous on the buttons or they say transcript or notes. You could create a uh, you could create a custom label. You could create a custom player label for each client, right? If there's different verbiage that are using. So just another way that you can uh, further customize the way your course player looks and feels. And then finally, let's just look at the color options here. So this is the default player that comes with Storyline, but there are a lot of different ways that you can customize uh, the look and feel and the colors. So here's some pre-built color themes, right? You can uh, just start there, right? Sometimes it just gives you a starting point for uh, building off of that. And here's a dark one, sometimes the black or the light slate. And then one, if you want to customize one of these or work from that, you then have this option to show advanced color editing. And this is really where you can dive into every piece of the player, the background, the, uh, the different separators, the left panel, and so that takes a little time to, to get familiar with this, but you've got a lot of opportunity for customizing how this looks. The one thing I would say is if you look in our downloads, we have a lot of already pre-built custom players. And from there, you can actually add them and import them into your player. So here's one that uh, is in our, in our downloads. It's a flat look. And I really like this flat look. And this might be the way I start uh, modifying it, right? So it kind of gets rid of all the bevels, all the shadows. And then from here, I could maybe customize it uh, you know, without having to go through everything from um, the start and just another way to kind of work with those. So I'd really encourage you to take a look at, at what we're offering for player 
uh, custom players in the downloads. And then of course I can always uh, come back here and, and add one of my, my own players or start over. So it's really that simple to modify the player. Let's go ahead and practice a few modifications. Try to just update a few of these elements that we just looked at. If you have any questions about where something is or how to get to something, just please post in the, in the community and one of us will be more than happy to help you out. But looking forward to seeing how you customize your next course.